putting 20% down on a new house. Yeah. Pros and cons. Yeah. Because okay. is that the... That's not the norm, or is that the norm, or or let's talk about that. Yeah, so it's definitely not the norm. Um, the majority of first-time home buyers, e even the average down payment for second-time home buyers. Mm -hmm. All right, and we are back. Here he is, realty expert, Mr. John Brodine. How are you doing, man? Good. What's up? Nothing. Nothing. What's new in your world? Anything exciting? I've been doing a bunch of getting more progress made on my house projects. So I think I talked to you last. I just mm -hmm. finished my basement up. Yep, I yep. just just got done doing my master bedroom. Oh, um, and then the next thing that I have to get done is I have to. So we slept in the office that was Carolyn's bedroom okay. while, while we were doing the master bedroom, and now we're back sleeping in the master bedroom. I need to take that bed apart, put it downstairs, move all the stuff out of that room. And then uh, I need to, I'm going to take the drywall sander to the walls in that room because I've got popcorn texture on those walls mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. And paint it, put a new light fixture in, get it ready to be the new nursery. So, um, you know, it's funny when you say I need to do this and I need to do that because when I hear things at my house, it's we need to do this and we need to do that, but I'm the one that does it. Yeah, to be <laughs> honest, my, my wife really doesn't care that much about this. Oh, well, she doesn't. She doesn't care that much about house projects and house yeah. upgrades. But then she, she, she's not the type where if she, uh, if I tell her an idea or whatever, she can't like picture it until mm -hmm. it's done. Right, right, um, right. So and see, my wife's been going to town redoing a lot of our furniture, oh, end tables, nightstands, dressers, cool. uh, mirrors, things like that, and. and She's never done this stuff before, at least in the 30 years I've known her, but she's actually really she's good at it. It's it. just that half of our house looks like a wood shop. That's cool. Yeah, you know? it's a fun hobby, though, isn't well, it? Well, I, I guess she's having a good time Anything doing it. Anything that so. gets it, it's a kind of a creative outlet. Sure, and sure. And it, and it does look good. Yeah. I mean, she's making it look much That's better. Awesome. Um, you think we should talk about any real estate stuff today, or should we just keep estate. talking? Okay, yeah. all right. Um, <laughs> if you want to. Okay, well, we, we probably yet? should. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> We're going to have to go have beers one day, though. Yeah, I know. Um, we won't talk about any real estate in that case. Well, that's okay. We won't bring the cameras with either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, putting 20% down on a new house. Yeah. Pros and cons. Yeah. Because okay. is that the, that's not the norm or is that the norm or, or let's talk about that. Yeah. So it's definitely not the norm. Um, the majority of first time home buyers, e even the average down payment for second time home buyers mm -hmm. uh, is less than 20%. Yeah. That's what closer. I thought. It's, I think it's in the teens. Okay. Um, it's over 10. Mm -hmm. I think the average down payment for first time home buyers is somewhere around 5%. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the majority of people aren't, aren't putting 20 percent down um I'll, I'll first talk about the pros of putting 20 percent okay. down and some of this applies a little bit more in a high interest rate market like we're in right now and you'll see why in just a second first off uh you're not going to have any private mortgage insurance private mortgage insurance usually costs anywhere from uh half a percent to one and a half percent of the loan amount per year and that's so it's additionally tacked on to your monthly uh, payment. Okay, okay, so if if you're paying for your mortgage insurance, or is that the same as house insurance? Or? Different. Okay. Yeah, okay. Very good question. Homeowners insurance is different. Okay. Uh, it's charged by your home, the company that you have your homeowners insurance through, um, and that's going to cover your house in the event of a fire. Right. Flood, okay. Or, like, okay. Because that comes out of your mortgage too. That that's added in as well. So okay. your, your mortgage technically is made up of just principal and interest, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, you'll probably have mortgage insurance if you're putting less than twenty percent down. Okay. Okay. On top of that, you'll have your escrow, which yep. you, you escrow for your taxes and your homeowners insurance. Okay. So sure. Your sure. escrow account builds up, and then they pay your homeowners insurance yep. bill once a year, and they pay your property tax bill once. Okay. A year. Okay. Okay. So yes, that uh, that's a important distinction. Private mortgage insurance yeah. is different from homeowner's okay. insurance. Um, you want to get rid of private mortgage insurance if you can. You don't want to get rid of your homeowner's no. insurance unless no. you're, you know, Jeff Bezos or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, where you can self-insure. So uh, no PMI equals a lower payment. Second thing that is going to help you is you're borrowing less money, so your monthly payment is also going to be lower. Um, you have a better chance at getting the best possible interest rate. And then this is really important in a hot market. Uh, you have a better chance of winning the perfect home, like your dream home comes up, everybody else wants it too. You have a better chance of winning that home in a bidding war uh, because, the, because you're a better qualified buyer. Mm -hmm. if, 
if your offer, you're putting 20% down and I'm putting 3% down. Yeah. Um, and our offers are exactly the same otherwise. R yeah. It shows that you're in a stronger financial mm -hmm. position to be able to buy my house, even if things went a little sideways with your personal financial situation. Sure. With sure. me, if my financial situation went a little sideways, I'm screwed and I might not qualify anymore. Or I might not have the money for the right. payment. Okay. So, okay. Um, that's very important. Uh, putting 20% down or a higher down payment in general is more beneficial when re interest rates are high because borrowing money is very expensive when interest rates are high like it is now. And so you're not going to like, you know, if you there, if, if rates are at 3%, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be able to outperform 3% with money you invest in, you know, mm -hmm. um, index funds or something like that, sure. or your retirement account. Okay. When, when interest rates are really high, there's less of a chance that you can outperform that. So it's better to have, you know, less debt when interest rates are high. Okay. Um, yeah. If that makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Now the cons of putting 20% down is you're likely delay, uh, you're delaying home ownership. Okay, so it might take you many more years to save up a 20% down payment than it would had you bought a home when you were able to make a 3% down payment and you bought much earlier. Delaying home ownership means that prices are rising. So the same house, if, if it takes you five years to save up your 20% down payment, that same house could easily be, you know, 10% more expensive. Oh yeah, your 20% right? is still gonna be yeah. not 20%. <laughs> yep, and it's appreciation yep. that you missed out mm -hmm. on. Um, you are probably really prioritizing saving up for your down payment. So you might not be, you might be delaying working on meeting other financial goals, like getting a fully funded emergency account, uh, paying off debts like student loans or mm -hmm. cars or those sort of things, um, You or investing in your retirement account. So you might be delaying other financial goals while you're working on saving up your money for this down payment. Um, your finances, when you're putting 20% down, um, you're less liquid. So like you've saved up that money, less liquid means you have less cash available yep. to, to use on things. Okay. So you're putting a big chunk of all of your savings into this house once you do save that money up. I, I don't suggest people bankrupt their entire savings no. to buy a house, whether you're putting 20% down or 3% down. It's really good to still have a little bit of a cushion. Oh, well, you got to have something there. Yeah. Yep. yep. And uh, when rates are low, uh, you could be getting a higher return on your investments had you if you saved up 20%, let's say that that's 40 grand or something, mm -hmm. um, had you put 10 or 15 grand down on the house and invested 25 or 30 grand, uh, yeah, if, if you did that, you'd probably be able to get a higher return sure. than what that interest rate is costing you. Yeah, I mean, and, um, and you got more equity into it right away then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you if you put 20% down, yeah. you have more equity. Yeah. If you put a lower down payment, though, and invest the remainder, you're more likely to get a higher return. Like, let's say you get an 8% return on your investments, like in your retirement account, for example. Okay. Um, and the interest rate's only three. That's a 5% difference uh, in, sure. in the return. You know, what the money's costing you to borrow versus what you're able to get, that that incentivizes borrowing more and investing more. Okay. Uh, it It's... Basically, you're you're being a little bit less conservative. You're, um, and when rates are higher, it forces people to be a little bit more conservative. Oh no! That yeah, sure, sense. sure. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that's what I would, it, it, especially it, for people in this situation where affordability is tough. Um, maybe they can't qualify for the type of house that they want. That's. If they can't qualify for the type of house that they want right now, that's especially a good idea. Maybe to save up more of a down payment so that that payment will be lower and might f the payment, if you can put enough down, could fall into your affordability range. Um, and meanwhile, while you're saving up and you're waiting, um, interest rates could fall by then. So there's there's other, mm -hmm. there's people that definitely have that mindset. So it is the twenty percent down thing is basically it's just for people who've got the money that can afford it. Um, I'd I mean, say it's more of a trade-off of whether you, how how long you want to delay home ownership for. Okay. Um, what your risk tolerance is. Um, right, right, and and that's why I ask because, like you had even mentioned too, John, uh, you don't want to go broke doing yeah. this. You got to have some kind of a cush back there if something yeah. were to happen to you. But um, I, I could see how it's a lot more appealing to be able to put twenty percent down. Obviously, it, it is. yeah, and I mean. 
and this we're mostly referring to first time home buyers sure. in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot more attainable for people to put 20% down on their second home. Because right, right. You, you could have cash saved up and you could also have equity from your first home that you've built up that you can roll into the next one. So mm -hmm. it doesn't take as much of a check out of pocket to be able to put 20% down on your second home. Um, when it comes to your first home though, yeah, there, there are pros and cons to each of them. It depends what the market's like. It depends what your personal biggest thing is probably your personal risk tolerance and your income level and your how expensive an area that you're in. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a more expensive area and you're not at a super high income, you might need to save up 20% to be able to buy your first home, to be able to get the type of home that you need even to be able to qualify for the bank loan. Okay. Because it's going to get that payment lower. Sure. Uh, what is getting off track a little bit? What's inventory like right now around the uh, forks? It's up a little higher than it was in the spring, mm -hmm. but it's still a seller's market. I'm going to be putting out um, a new market update just in, what, what are we at? Is it the 24th today? I believe it is. Yeah. So on the 1st of August, I'm going to be putting out a new market update so people can stay tuned for that. Um, okay. And um, you like doing these updates and stuff, don't you? Yeah. Well, it's a consistency <laughs> thing. I sure. don't know if you've noticed, but I'm like a creature of habits. So oh, yes, we've once noticed. Once I start doing something, I, <laughs> I stay consistent with it. I pride myself do, on do that. You, um, uh, do you have your routine? Are you sus um, Do you have any suspicions or are you like when you're getting ready to go compete, uh, do you have anything that you have to do in the same no. order or any of that? Because, uh, when I played hockey, we did, everybody yeah. did. And we all had our little things that we went through, but, uh, you're just, you're kind of a numbers guy though. And, and you like to do things. I mean, you've got your routines. Yeah. I, I like routine and I like, um, you know, consistency in my life, mm -hmm. but I'm not superstitious really at all. Okay. My wife's much more superstitious than I am. Okay. And the consistency, boy, that's easy to have when you start having kids, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it gets a little bit, uh, things, things change a little Your bit. Your consistent inconsistency, yeah. consistency. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that things, makes any you, sense. It's, you're, you're, uh, much more likely to have a wrench thrown in your plans. Absolutely. But you know but what? That's that's life. It, it is. And, yeah. and, and enjoy it. I mean, robots. Yeah, right. Um, okay. Now, if somebody wants to find out more, if they're looking at a house and they're thinking to themselves, boy, should I put 20% down or not? And they need, uh, well, they should have already been talking to you in the first yeah. place. How do they get a hold of Brett, uh, realty expert John Brodine? Yeah, 701-213-5428. Even if you're six months out from wanting to make a move or in your early, in very early stages, it's okay to reach out to me. I can mm -hmm. give you guidance, maybe make your preparation for buying your first house more efficient, get you on the right track, um, help you understand what you need to do better so that you can get there faster, reach your goals. That's perfectly fine. I love helping people out in all stages of and, and your hours aren't nine to five, Monday through Friday. Yep, correct. Get a hold of you whenever. My, my phone's on me. All right. Uh, there we go. That's Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast. Uh, it's been a while, like I said, but yeah. he's back today. Realty expert, John Brodine. Uh, you're going to be back on Friday. Yep. And yep. Uh, we'll get ready to uh, kick off into the weekend. Stay tuned. Have it to yourself. <laughs> a great day. Uh, we'll be back with John again Friday morning at 10.